Hallelujah. Come on, let's put those hands together. As we begin to just celebrate the presence of God in this place, the Bible says wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So I need two or three of y'all just to walk across the aisle and greet somebody. Tell somebody good morning. Tell your neighbor good morning. Good to see you. Hallelujah. Come on, if you hadn't seen somebody lately, why don't you just tell them good morning? Listen, I, I just want to declare, I'm still amazed 
at how and why God saved me. Is anybody still amazed? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. He's a wonder in my soul. Yes, he is. Yes, he and so is. every now and then, listen, listen, yes. we need to just go back mm -hmm. and remind ourselves yes. of the mechanism that God used to save us. We, we never need to distance ourselves from the love of God. We never need to distance ourselves by what God used to save us. Anybody know it was by grace yes. that we yes. have been saved? The Bible says, for by grace have you been saved through faith, that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should what? Boast. So we declare today that God's grace is amazing. Can I get a witness? Yes, hallelujah. Amen. Sing grace, how sweet the
Come on, if you know God is just worthy to be praised, we praise Him because His grace is amazing. Anybody know that God's grace is amazing? Yes, yes. I still can't figure out why He loved us so. Yes. And so every now and then, you just got to lift your hands to the heavens and say, Lord, Lord. I love you. Yes. You have to say, Lord, I thank you. And I know I don't understand everything in my life. But God, my desire is that you have thine own way. Hallelujah. If you don't mind just lifting up your mind to the heavens and asking God to have his way in your life. Oh, 
our consciousness that he's so amazing that when we have been there 10,000 years bright shining as the sun we have no less days to sing his praise than when we first begun so that means that it's endless and his grace is endless and his grace just carries us each and every day each and every minute, each and every hour, he just keeps blessing us and allowing his grace to fall upon each and every one of us. Isn't that a blessing? Isn't that something? Because I know I don't deserve it, but he just does do it anyway. In spite of me, he looks beyond my fault, and he still supplies my every need. I thank God for that. Our church anniversary is fastly approaching. Yeah. 
Amen. And the fourth Sunday in October, we'll be celebrating our church anniversary. We're asking all members of our church for $200. Amen. 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 And all auxiliary ministries, we're asking $200. Amen. Amen. We, we, our church anniversary and money goes towards our, our winter bills. Our bills go up pretty high. Gas bills. use that to offset those expenses. So just give if God has blessed you. If you can't make the 200, do the best you can. And just continue to ask the Lord to continue to bless. And he will bless. And he loves a cheerful giver. And I tell you this, you can't beat God giving no matter how hard you try. I used to hear that song when I was coming up when I was a kid. I didn't understand it because I wouldn't. I didn't take care of nothing. Mom and Dad took care of everything. When I reached in the refrigerator, the milk jumped in my hand. I didn't know where it come from. I didn't know that uh, the Lord was just blessing, and that he, my parents they 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 were givers, and the Lord just continued to give back. So He'll bless you if you will open up your hand and let it come out, because if it's open. Something can come in. You keep it balled up and closed. Can't nothing get in. Can't nothing get out. Amen. At this time, it's time for our tithes and offerings. Amen. And we're in the hands of our usher. Bless you.
Thank you and we bless you, God, because you've been good to us, God. God, just our thanksgiving is just an expression of God of how good you've been to us, God. God, we can't bless you enough. We can't thank you enough because you've been excellent in everything that you do. God, we do declare that from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is worthy to be praised. And so, God, we're going to bless you, God. We're going to give you glory because you deserve it. Thank you, Lord, for proving yourself to be faithful in all that you do. Thank you, God, for being our, our provider. Thank you for opening up the windows and doors of heaven and pouring out blessings that we did not have room enough to receive them. God, we give back to you now just a portion of that which you have so richly blessed us with, God. I pray for those who have given and I pray for those who had a desire to give but did not have. God, would you bless, Lord, in the name of Jesus and we promise we will give you glory because you deserve it. It is in the name of Jesus that we pray and we ask it all. Amen. so good to see you all this morning. We come to give God glory. I want to do something a little different this morning, just a little different, just tolerate me to do that. I, I want to get us uh, prepared for some, some worship, the high point of worship. We have been blessing God. We've been giving him glory. But I just want to want to do something a little, little bit different. It's not going to take away from where we are going in worship. Um, but I, I just want just to, just to appeal challenging week for a lot of us. I, I, don't, I don't believe I'm the only one in this situation. It's been challenging. It's been uh, draining physically, mentally, emotionally, draining. But uh, in, in spite of all that we've gone through, God has still been good to us. So we just want to come and give him some glory. And I just want to read a passage and then I just want us to start blessing God, just praising him in spite of our situation and circumstance in spite of where you are at this particular moment.
because he still is deserving of our praise. He still is deserving of our glory. He still is deserving of us to open our mouths and to, and to bless his wonderful name. I was reading this Psalm, Psalm 71, and it, it was speaking, and it just says something like this. Uh, in verse 5, it says, you have been my hope, sovereign Lord. You've been my confidence since my youth. From birth, I have relied on you. You brought me forth from my mother's womb. I will ever praise you. And then he says this in verse 7. I have become a sign to many that you are my strong refuge. Can I just tell you, can I just say something about that past, that verse right there? Look, when you put your faith and your trust in God, when you allow him to work in your life, no matter what's going on, he can turn it around and make it work to your good. And the stuff that you're going through, you can be a sign to many that God is your refuge. He's your strong refuge. And then he says this. He says, my mouth is filled with your praise. I declare your splendor all day long. Look, when God has made us a sign that he is our strong refuge, our response is to give him glory. Our response is to worship him. Our response is to respond in giving him glory. Because look, I don't care what you're going through. God is working it out even now. He's working it right now. And so your response is to trust him. He's already proven himself to be faithful in everything. So no matter what you're going through, our God is able, our God is worthy to be praised. So let's stand to our feet and let's give him glory. The psalmist isn't finished. He drops down to verse 16, verse 19, and he says this, your righteousness, God, it reaches to the heaven. You have done great things. Who, oh God, is like you? So look, we don't know that. The, look, we don't know what is going to happen to us. But what we do know is that there no, there's nobody like our God. Look, there's nobody like Him. His righteousness reaches the skies. He's done great things for us, and so our response is to bless His name. So let's take out some time and give Him glory because He's God and He's good all the time. Look, He has never failed us, and so we come to give Him glory. Look, from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is worthy to be praised. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures. To all generations. Look, I just want us to know how good God is. Once you realize how good God is, it'll be easy to bless his name. It'll be easy to give him all of your problems. It'll be easy to step back and let him to work in your life. It'll be easy to let him to guide you in all righteousness. All we have to do is just respond in obedience and praise and he'll do the rest. So let us be thankful, let us be grateful, let us open our mouth. Look, step out of your comfort zone and just wave your hand every once in a while. Step out of your comfort zone and open your mouth and bless his name. Step out of your comfort zone and encourage somebody next to you and let them know that God is good all the time and that we come to worship him. We come to adore him. We come to lift him up because he's God and he's good. Amen, amen. Minister Mallory, y'all go ahead and give us something else that we'll, we'll come back here in a minute. We'll come back here in a minute. Just worship right there. My hallelujah belongs to you. Yeah. Oh, let's stay right there. Yeah. Our hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah, my hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah, my hallelujah belongs to you. Come on, tell the Lord, you deserve it. You deserve it.
your finger to heaven. Tell the Lord all the glory. All of the glory belong to you. Come on. All of the glory said. All of the glory belong to you. All of the glory belong to you. All of the glory belong. And when we put an order, I think it's putting restrictions on the move of the Spirit. And since we're being, we've been teaching about the Holy Spirit, um, you know, I, I want us to be open to his movement and whatever he wants to do. I'm not saying having an order of service is bad. We still follow some sort of order. But I don't want us to be confined to that. I can see our service consisting more of praise and worship and prayer, you know, and then the word. I can see it consisting of that. And once we give ourselves to praise and worship and prayer, you know, um, I, I want it to look more like what we're going to be doing when Jesus comes back and when we go to heaven. Because heaven is going to be filled with nothing but praise. And that we're going to be in his presence communing with him. And so... Until he comes back, our communing with him is through our praise and our worship and our praying. And so if we focus on that when we come to church, I'm, I promise you that the spirit of God will be heavy in this place and he will rest upon our lives. and We will see deliverances. We will see uh, people set free. We will see signs and wonders. We will see miracles happening. Look, it will be the norm. We will begin to see God working in this place. And look, and we won't be surprised by it because 
it will happen if we give ourselves to him continually. And so I think that's where God is taking us. And so I just want to, I want to do that. I, I allow, allow us to move in that direction. Allow us to just to be led by the spirit of God. Allow us to do that. I want to move now into our prayer period um, and that we can do some praying, praying, communing, talking to God, pouring our hearts out to him. Uh, in prayer. We do have some prayer concerns. I did uh, just get a, a, a prayer a request. Pray for the Roe family. Miss Frances Roe passed away. Um, and so we want to pray for her family. Keep them lifted up uh, in prayer. Um, uh, it, death is not easy. It's, it's not. It hits everybody hard. Um, and so, but we serve a God that's faithful and he's our comfort. And he's our peace and our strength. And so we want to pray for the Roe family. Keep them lifted up in prayer. Also continue to pray for Miss Evelyn Hunt. Uh, continue to pray for William Russell. Uh, he's home. And so we want to pray for him and his recovery. Continue to lift up um, all of our senior members, those who, are, who have been hospitalized, those who are in the nursing home. We want to continue to pray for them. And then all of our families that are in bereavement. We want to uh, continue to lift them up in prayer. So at this time, could our altar? I didn't hear you. Yes, um, Brother Dave Campbell, his mother, her name is Barbara Campbell. So we want to also continue to pray for them, pray for her as well. So if our altar workers could start making their way to the front of the church, there may be somebody here who needs specific individualized prayer. And if that's you, just move forward. Um, I'm just going to turn it over now. Let Minister Mallory come. I, I'm, I'm not doing anything this morning. I just wanted to take a, take a break. I told our ministers that we, I want to I wanna do about every six weeks. I'm going to just take a break just when I start feeling real drained. And so this was one of those weeks that I was really, really, really tired. And so I just called Minister Mallory and asked if he could fill in for me, and he was always willing to do that. I mean, it was to the, I called him on Friday, and so I, I, I know that I can count on him. Uh, there's a couple of others that, 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 that I can call on at the last minute and ask them, I got to give our other member ministers at least a week's notice because they, they won't sleep for the next three days if I call them on Friday. But um, I appreciate uh, just the fact that we have a, a good a good number of ministers who are capable of just standing here and preaching. And so um, I'm just going to turn it over now to Minister Mallory and let him come and to give us a word for this morning. Just pray for him that God can speak. We're at the high point of worship. That's, that's, that's when we hear God speaks. And so I'm pretty sure that he's going to speak at this particular moment. So pray for him and pray with him that God will speak into our hearts this morning. God bless you. Come on, give God praise this morning for just another opportunity. Give God praise for just another opportunity to share in his word. I thank you all for your uh, vibrance in worship, your attentiveness in worship, uh, your desire to move uh, beyond the courtyard uh, and, and move into the holy of holy. Uh, you all do know there is a distinction. Uh, so we have to move beyond courtyard praise uh, and get behind the veil where the kind of glory dwells, the presence of the Lord. That's where we're able to see him face to face and be transformed and changed. Um, uh, I don't want to hold you all too long. I'd like to thank God. Uh, I see my father and mom have come in. And, and so we like to thank God for dad. They snuck in on me. Dad, would you like to take the pulpit or are you okay? You, you tell me. Now, now, you can't come up here if you're going to do all that dancing now. Anybody, anybody was out last week, y'all know what I'm talking about. 
I thank God that my dad is liberated in his worship. Amen. I said, Brother Fleming ain't got nothing on my dad. <laughs> Start calling daddy Lightfoot Mallory. <laughs> amen, amen. I like to uh, have fun, uh, but I do solicit your prayers. Uh, Pastor Brooks preached uh, uh, Pastor Rob's anniversary, and he said something uh, that kind of struck a chord in me. Uh, but the prophet had basically said to God, uh, you're trying to ruin me. Uh, he said, you're trying to ruin me. He said, because all I get to preach is bad news. Yeah. He said, ain't nobody going to like me. He said, because all I get to do is preach bad news. And that st stuck a, struck a chord in my heart because um, the types of messages the Lord gives me to share are very uncomfortable messages. Um, they're very contemplative messages. They make you think. Uh, they challenge you to your core. And so I, I, I started to identify with the prophet. I said, Lord, I can't ever preach, spin around three times. Uh, God's got a blessing for you. Uh, name it. I said, I can't ever preach, name it, and claim it. The Lord said, no. Uh, so I have to stay in my lane. Amen. Amen, amen. Today is another one of those uh, reflective uh, words. It's going to be found in the book of Jonah. <clears throat> we always thank God for my lovely wife, Miss Carla Mallory. Um, and my son, I see Bubby back there. Bubby, I love you, man. Uh, I don't know where my other two children are, but I always honor them. My family means a lot to me, you all, and so I just, uh, you all just allow me to honor them when I get a chance. Um, if you have Jonah, we're going to read uh, chapter 1, verse 15. So they took up Jonah, cast him forth into the sea. And the sea ceased from her raging. Amen. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea. And the sea ceased from her raging. Amen. Let me pray. God, I just ask you to have mercy today. Pray that you would open up our hearts and our minds to receive what it is you want to share with us. I know it's confrontational, uh, but God, um, that's what your word does. It, it's truth, and it has to cut. Uh, and so God, just as it has cut me, uh, I pray that it also cut to the heart of your people. But I'm reminded in Acts, they were cut to their hearts, but they also responded uh, after they were cut. They say, what must we do now? And so, God, I pray after the word is presented uh, that we all make a decision that will give you glory. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. This message uh, was given to me out of deep reflection, deep reflection, being led by the Spirit of God uh, to look at the book of Jonah. I've preached the book of Jonah. Uh, I've read it. Uh, and so God led me by the Spirit to look at the book. Uh, upon reading the book, I noted several reflections about Jonah. Uh, I noted Jonah's call. I noted... Jonah's flight, I noted Jonah's prayer, I noted Jonah's preaching, and I also noted Jonah's pouting. <laughs> Jonah pouted there at the end. Uh, um, but the Spirit would not let me rest uh, in any of that. 
but he spoke to me about the initial boat ride. The initial boat ride. This revelation helped me tremendously to discover a truth that perhaps have slipped through my mind. In verse 15, uh, it says, when he gave up Jonah, the sea ceased from her raging. The, the ship's captain had discovered that he had a fugitive on board. He had a fugitive on board and, and he had to make some decisions uh, at this point in the text. And so for a thought I want to use, man overboard. Man. Somebody say man. man. Overboard. <laughs> yeah, man overboard. Lord help us here. Man overboard. They had to throw Jonah off the boat. This is a tough word, you all. So I need your prayers. Amen. I need your prayers. And for a subject I want to use, the downside to harboring a fugitive. The downside. Listen, he, he, it had gotten to a point where they had to throw a man off the boat. I, I wish y'all were praying with me. It had gotten to a point that they had to throw a person off the boat, man overboard. But they had discovered that they were harboring a fugitive. They were harboring a, a fugitive. So, so I just want you to think, it, there is a downside, you all, to harboring fugitives. Now, when I say a fugitive, a fugitive is a person who is fleeing, it's the person who's fleeing. They're, they're, they're on the run. They're, uh, they're on the run from justice. They're, they're on the run from the law. They're on the run from truth. Talking about a fugitive. They're running from something. They're, they're, they're on the run. They're fleeing. They, they don't want to be captured. That, that's uh, a fugitive. But the person who harbors a fugitive is, is a person who gives shelter to harbor. It's to, it, it, means to give, it means to give shelter, a, a, a shelter or to offer refuge. It means to offer refuge. It means to conceal or hide. Are y'all praying with me? Uh, what's the downside? to harboring a fugitive. Harboring means to give shelter, to offer refuge, to conceal. Now, aiding means to provide support for or relief. Because once you know you have a fugitive and you keep harboring, there's another term, it's called aiding and... Uh, this, this is tough here. Yes. Once you know you have a fugitive and you assist them, now you're aiding. Now y'all see where I'm going with this. Yeah, yeah. Man overboard. Okay. Harboring is, is giving shelter, aiding and abetting. It, uh, it's providing support for or relief. It's to help. It's to promote the progress uh, or accomplishment of somebody. Whatever they're trying to do, you're trying to facilitate. You're trying to give them assistance uh, to help or support, to assist a person or a thing that aids or furnishes assistance, a helper. Now, abetting means to encourage. You, you are actually encouraged. Now, if you have a fugitive and you're aiding and abetting, you're actually encouraging them. Y'all ain't going to like me. You, you're helping them. <laughs> you're helping a person get away from the law. You, you, you got your hand in on it. You, Lord, help me here. Usually it's with some wrongdoing. 
the Lord told me to address this whole ride or die mindset. Yeah, we're we going to ride or die together. The Lord said, okay, okay. You, you sure right about that. Keep harboring them. Every believer needs to know that God is looking to bring all fugitives to justice. Did y'all hear me? Every believer needs to know that God is looking to bring all fugitives to justice. He's looking, I'm telling y'all, he's looking. And as we looked at these passages, I believe we can discover the downside. Now, if you know God is looking for fugitives, there's got to be a downside to harboring them. As we look at this text, we can discover the downside to harboring them, a fugitive, and what to do if we got one on board. Are you praying with me? Yeah, we got to, we got to do something. Say, man overboard. Lord, have mercy. I know everybody's going to get nervous because it just might be you. Yeah, I know. That's why we get nervous. Man overboard, the downside to harboring a fugitive. I'm going to stay still today and just preach flat-footed. <laughs> we need to discover what is the downside. First of all, you all, let's walk through the text and I'm going to try to be as quick as I possibly can. You need to know if you harbor a fugitive, disaster is pending. Disaster, disaster is pending. If, if you are harboring a fugitive, somebody who's trying to evade the law, somebody who's trying to get away, you need to know. I'm just, I'm just need, I need to let you know that disaster is pending. Let, let's do a little reading. It says, now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying this, arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah, he rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarsha from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord, he sent out a great wind into the sea and there was a mighty tempest in the sea that the ship was like to be broken. Verse 5, then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto the Unto his God cast forth the wares that were in the ship to the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down to the sides of the ship. Look what he was doing. He lay asleep. <laughs> he was fast asleep. First of all, I want to tell you, if you're, if you're harboring a fugitive, disaster is pending. 